Hi everybody, my name is Ian Vair and I am the Green Mountain Chef. Coming to you from the studios of PEG TV right here in Rutland, Vermont. Today we have a wonderful dish ready to prepare for you. It is a classic shepherd's pie. The ingredients that we have sourced are from our local farmer's market. First off, I would like to thank the Burger Farm at the local farmer's market. They have donated very graciously a nice portion of ground lamb. Also, I would like to thank Mountain View Bison Farm. They uh, very graciously donated also some ground bison. So what's going to be unique about our shepherd's pie today is that I'm utilizing some bison rather than ground beef. Now, most people probably assume that a shepherd's pie is using all ground beef, beef, but the truth is that a true shepherd's pie utilizes ground lamb. So we do have some ground lamb today. We do have some ground bison and uh, a lot of classical ingredients. Now, I'll be using a classical French sauce called a velouté, which is one of the five mother sauces. And uh, we're going to dress it up with a, a, little a few fun extras. So I'd like to get started. And uh, so this dish probably is going to take us about an hour and a half, which we don't quite have time for today. But I uh, have, you know, work a little television magic. And it's a lot of fun. So we're going to condense it into, you know, hopefully less than 30 minutes. We'll see what happens. So where we want to start is making the base for our French mother sauce of velouté. The base for that, and for many great sauces, is a stock. And what a stock is, generally, <clears throat> you are using what the French call mirepoix. And what mirepoix is, is celery, carrots, and onions. The ratio that the French use is by weight 50% onion, 25% carrot, and 25% celery. I like to add a little garlic into it. A few other uh, additions would be some black peppercorns and a bay leaf. Very, very classical. So let's get started there. So with the stock, we're going to be utilizing for this recipe, we don't need a full gallon and uh, you know, frequently you would use a, a full pound of mirepoix, celery, carrots, and onions to make a gallon of stock. Today we only need about four cups, about a quart. So I'm going to start off with six cups because it will be simmering for about an hour. So we're going to lose a little volume there in our stock. So I decided to use about, on average, you know, a lot of people don't have scales at home. It's going to come down to about a half of an onion. And I'd like to demo an onion for everyone. Let's see what we have here. So a full onion. This is a nice, easy way to break down the onion. We're also going to use the onion uh, shell, um, the, you know, the outside here for the stock. Everything that we, we use, um, from the peel here to, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, carrot um, peels that we're going to take off, all that's going to go into the stock on top of our ratio of mirepoix. So let's get started. I like to cut off the top side leaving the root side intact. That gives us a nice, solid, almost immovable, workable onion to uh, be safe with. Now, before I get into this, I want to show everyone, and I like to do this with all my shows, be sure that we're using proper knife skills. We're sort of curling our fingers a bit, keeping our thumb back, and there, our fingers are sort of a guide for our knife, okay? So we're going to cut straight down through, take off our onion peels, Helps to have fingernails. <laughs> All right, there we go. So this would go right into my stock. Now, like I said, I, I've, I've already, you know, we don't have time to let this go for an hour on the show, so I've already made the stock, but this would go into that and simmer for about an hour. Now, if we're going to dice this, depends on how big you want your dice. Now, for this stock, I only quartered these onions, okay? So I just went down through and went down through again. Nice and easy. Now we're also going to use another half of an onion for our uh, velouté and our stuffing for the shepherd's pie. So for that, I do want a diced onion. So we're going to do it a little bit differently. Fingers on top. We're going to cut 
almost all the way through. You see how we, we uh, still have intact the, the root side. We'll come out and then we'll go back over top two or three times, depending on how big, you know, how large we want the dice to be. And then we're going to go back over top. And it's going to give us a nice even dice. Something else for stock there. Put this aside. Now, for the carrots, I've already peeled these. And I'd like to go straight down through. Through again. Make a nice dice. Remember, keep those fingers curled. Keep that thumb back. Also, folks, it's very important to have a nice, sharp knife. They taught us in culinary school that the most dangerous knife in the kitchen was the dullest, believe it or not. Okay, now we're going to use a couple stalks of celery. And with the celery, I'm just going to cut down through one more time. There's no exact way to do this, folks, okay? So if you have a different method, no big deal. But this is uh, sort of how we learned in culinary school. And as a chef, these are the tactics that I've uh, grown used to. And uh, it can be very, very quick if, uh, if you have a lot of practice. All right. now. Normally, these would go right into the stock, but I'm going to reserve them because I'm going to use them for the stuffing for the shepherd's pie. Okay, garlic. I have a nice clove of garlic here, and I only need today a few um, cloves. Excuse me, I have a nice bulb of garlic. I like to cut the bottom off, and then I just sort of, to make it easy to peel, you just sort of push down on it a little bit just kind of sort of cracking the, the, the skin on the outside. And that makes it much easier to peel. It kind of loosens things up there. Now again, all this is going to go right into your stock. Not much rhyme and reason with uh, garlic and dicing the garlic. I like to go most of the way through and then turn it so I have a flat surface and then go through again. Okay, so let's do, let's do that one more time. And then we turn it, because sometimes that last piece or so uh, can be a little wobbly, so that makes it a little less dangerous, if you will. Now, to dice these, keep my hand flat, and I just just go over a few times. I don't need a small little mince. I'm just going for just kind of an average dice here. Nothing uh, too extravagant. All right. Now this would also go into the stock. Now I spoke about peppercorns going into our stock. And you know, for your average gallon, I generally use about a teaspoon. And today we have a little less than a half of a gallon. So I'm going to use about a half of a teaspoon. Okay, not much, all right? probably a couple dozen peppercorns. And the bay leaf, another traditional speck, generally one bay leaf per gallon. I don't need that much today. I'm just going to use about half of one. Now remember, I've already made my stock, so I don't have to get this going. OK, so let's work some television magic and pretend like that's all done and stock's ready. Wonderful. <laughs> this is kind of fun. Um, Let's see, what's going to be next? So our stock is working for pretend. Um, now, shepherd's pie, what's this all about? Well, generally, it's, you know, like I said, lamb. We're putting bison in it today. We're going to cook up some carrots. We're going to cook up some celery and onions. All right, I have uh, some, some green peas. I have some corn that's going to go into it. You can throw other ingredients like mushrooms into it. That's nice. That makes a nice stuffing. OK, now the top of it, we don't put like a pie crust on it. We're using basically mashed potatoes. So again, time-wise, mashed potatoes, I, I've already cooked them. Um, and what's important with the potatoes, you want, first you want to peel them. And when you dice them so that they cook evenly, be sure, it doesn't matter how large or small they are, but it's important that the size of those potatoes are consistent. OK, so we're going to bring our water to a boil. 
We're gonna add our potatoes. And for this recipe, about two pounds worked out really well. Uh, I'd rather have a little extra than not quite enough because then our, our recipe's kind of thrown off. So two pounds was nice. It didn't leave me with barely any extra. It was a nice quantity. So brought my water to a boil, added about a teaspoon of salt. Potatoes went in and uh, they only took about 10 minutes. Now depending on the size that you dice them, 10 or 15 minutes should be plenty of time. So I would set a 10 minute timer, check on them, stick a fork in them, okay? They want to be, you want them to be tender, not mush, okay? They're still gonna have some form to them. Um, but uh, yeah, 10 minutes was good. So when they were finished, strain them off. I'm gonna go back to my same stock pot that I used. Here are the potatoes. They're gonna go into this bowl here. Now I couldn't find a potato masher today. I have a nice firm wire whip that I'm gonna use, which is fine. Uh, I also at, at home have used a, a fork, you know, mashing it down, but a standard potato masher works uh, quite well. So what I do at work when I'm making large batches of uh, mashed potatoes for the shepherd's pie, I like to use uh, a mixing bowl. That works quite well. You can use a whip attachment on your mixing bowl, okay? So mashed potatoes, what else is gonna go in here? Once these are nice and uh, soft, try to get as many lumps out of here as possible. I like to put a little half and half. Then we're gonna put a half and half in butter, basically. I mean, not much different from your standard mashed potato. Salt and pepper to taste. And the last thing, believe it or not, we're gonna add in a couple of egg yolks. Why do you ask? That helps bind it a bit. That way, as the shepherd's pie is cooking, excuse me, it's not gonna, the potatoes aren't gonna turn to mush. All right, these are close. I'm gonna go back over it with a fork. And part of the reason why I'm doing these first, folks, I want them to cool down. And they've already cooled a fair amount because we're going to be placing them on top of that lamb and bison mixture like I had explained. All right, these potatoes look nice. I've got about two tablespoons of butter. That's going to go in, get that nice and mixed up. If by chance your potatoes have cooled off quite a bit and they're not still warm, you might want to utilize some melted butter. That might be a little easier. These worked out pretty well. Okay, now I have a quarter cup of half and half. It's going to go right in. That mixed up. Yummy. I like to use kosher salt. And on this recipe, I say to taste. You know, we all have, many of us likely have made mashed potatoes. So make a nice batch of mashed potatoes. Have fun with it. Taste it while you're working with it. All right. And basically, when it is the flavor that you want, that's when you're gonna add your egg yolk. Now, being the mushroom enthusiast that I am, of course I had to bring some mushrooms with me. And today I'm going to be using a mushroom called a maitake. In uh, Japanese, they call that the, the dancing mushroom. We call it here in the States, a hen of the woods. It's wonderful. They're beautiful. They're quite large. They grow under oak trees. They come out in October, and they are this chef, one of this chef's very, very favorites. So I happen to have a commercial freeze dryer, so that's what I've done with these Hen of the Woods. I freeze dry them, and I turn them into a powder with my commercial spice grinder. And I'm gonna add in a, a couple of tablespoons. They're very interesting. They have a sort of an outdoorsy, slightly musty, mu mushroomy flavor that is wonderful. I use these in several of my recipes. 
Okay, so before I add my egg yolks, let's give this a taste. Mmm, wow. Primo. Okay, two egg yolks. Remember, we're adding the egg yolks in to bind the mashed potatoes. All right. I know we probably spent five minutes here making mashed potatoes, but this is a very important part of this, you know, component of this recipe. And they came out wonderful. So I'm going to set this aside. Next, I'm going to render my lamb and my bison. About eight ounces each, so a full pound all together. I'm going to start with maybe two tablespoons of canola oil, a high, basically a high temp oil. Canola oil, grapeseed oil, um, avocado oil works quite nicely. Now the key to saute, and that's this cooking method, we're sauteing here, is high heat with not too much fat. Now these cuts of meat, these ground, uh, this ground lamb and bison, it definitely is more lean than your average, say, 80-20 ground beef. Don't be afraid to add a skosh more oil. Okay. Now, I'm going to add in my carrots. When the meat is, it's probably about three quarters of the way cooked at this point. My heat's all the way up, believe it or not. Let them go for a minute here. Bison shepherd's pie. Gotta love it. So everyone, um, I am a French trained chef. I am a mushroom uh, enthusiast. Some, some people would call me a mushroom expert. I've been studying them for nearly 20 years. Um, the farmer's market is my primary venue of, uh, of work. And I love it there. One thing that's great about the farmer's market is it's local and it's sustainable. And we have friends there, family there. Um, local community. Another reason why I like it is it's very safe. Large aisles. It's very large, you know, very big and wide open. Much more than the, your average grocery store, in fact. Saturdays, 10 to 2, right off of West Street at the Vermont Farmers Food Center. The Vermont Farmer's Market. Okay, my carrots are uh, starting to uh, cook there. I'm going to add in my celery and my onions. So I've uh, so far used about a pound of ground meat, one large carrot, a couple stalks of celery, one half of an onion, and these need to cook for another minute. We want to make sure that they're cooked enough so that they're slightly tender. Now they're going to cook more in the oven, but we don't want them to be raw going in. All right. I do have a little bit of garlic. The garlic I like to add towards the end of the sauteing process just to sweat it a little bit. Now believe it or not, my next ingredient to add is going to be a gluten-free flour. This is in fact a gluten-free dish. And it doesn't need to be, but I had the option to use gluten-free flour, so I figured I would. Why not? Okay, our garlic is starting to brown slightly. I don't want to burn that. So I'm using a quarter of a cup of my gluten-free flour. 
And essentially what we're doing here is making a roux, which uh, in French cuisine is a primary thickening agent for many sauces. And like I said, today we're making a, a velouté, which is one of the five French mother sauces. And in essence, what that means, what it is, is uh, any thickened stock. And uh, we've made our stock. We're going to add that in shortly. So now that our flour is nice and incorporated, have a little bit of wine that's going to go in. Don't worry. It's not going to alter our uh, state of mind or anything. I'm only using a, a couple of ounces, and it's basically all going to cook off. So I want to add my wine. I also am adding Worcestershire sauce, Tabasco, excuse me, Worcestershire sauce, balsamic, and liquid smoke. That liquid smoke is a nice little addition at the end. All right, now this is going to start to thicken up and make a nice sauce. It's actually going to get too thick unless I add some stock to it pretty soon here. All right, so I've just strained my stock. I'm adding in a cup to start. This needs to come back to a boil to see how, uh, how viscous it will be. And, and you know, we want it to basically be a little thicker than, uh, than a soup, uh, more than coating the back of the spoon, essentially. OK. Wonderful. Some salt and pepper to taste. Probably about a, depends on what you like. You know, today I'm adding about a half of a teaspoon of salt, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. Wonderful. All right, spice-wise, I have some uh, Old Bay, which is one of my secret ingredients. Uh, it, it's, uh, I was trained off the Chesapeake Bay, and, and it's a, a Chesapeake crab spice. Um, some garlic powder, onion powder, basil, oregano, thyme. All the specs on these will be at the recipe that you can uh, see uh, at the end of the show. You see we're thickening up here. Nice. All right. Let's add about a cup of uh, green peas and corn. This actually, these actually are frozen vegetables given the time of year. But um, I, I don't like canned vegetables personally. So the, the frozen ones, uh, work out pretty well. Very nice. Don't be afraid to taste, folks. OK. So we're close, believe it or not. Now, another thing that I like to add when I'm cooking for myself is a little cayenne pepper. And if you are a hot pepper enthusiast, Feel free. Gives a nice little extra oomph to the recipe. So this is going to go in an appropriate sized casserole dish. This honestly could feed at least four, possibly six people. Quite nice. Wonderful. Now is when we go back to the mashed potatoes that we already made. Let's see here. Excuse me. Okay. Now I'm sort of delicately going to be placing the potatoes onto the shepherd's pot. And these have cooled down a, a, a fair amount. Uh, they're very e much easier to work with when they've cooled down, by the way. I just want to say that. So that's why I personally like to get this out of the way early. Get those potatoes cooked early. And we're just going to lay these down on top. Nice. Yeah, I think two pounds was just right for this, folks, by the way. It worked out great. Really nice mashed potatoes with the addition of some egg yolk to bind it up on top of this uh, bison and lamb-based shepherd's pie. So what I like to do is I like to take a fork at the end 
and just sort of score it. It looks really nice, these ridges that are in here, when uh, it finishes cooking. Okay. Shepherd's pie. Bison, shepherd's pie. Okay, I have the oven on 350. It's going to go for about, about an hour on average. This is going to go in. Little TV magic. <laughs> it's been an hour, right? Wow. Look at this guy. Nice and browned. The sauce is bubbling up. This looks beautiful. Let's get this plated. Hot, okay? Very careful. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is easily going to feed four to six people. Easily. I like to put a little garnish on top. This is just a nice little sprig of rosemary, a little bit of parsley, and there you have it. Look, bison shepherd's pie, locally sourced from your Vermont farmer's market. Enjoy, everyone. Don't forget, we have the recipe on the website. You'll be able to view it uh, after the show. Uh, my name is Chef Ian Vair. Um, you're watching Green Mountain Chef. We will have many more episodes utilizing fun wild mushrooms, comfort food, easy recipes. I hope you enjoy. Have a wonderful day.